Hello, my name is Tony Botting and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this video, we'll show how to apply a torque onto a SOLIDWORKS simulation beam structure. So we have a multi-level parking lot lighting system where you supply the vertical support pole and the extension arms, but you purchase the lighting fixtures. The manufacturer supplies the CG and the weight of the fixtures. The loads on the pole from the fixtures might look something like this. Instead of meshing the entire assembly, which may prove to be difficult, you can model the vertical pole only and using the simulation beam functionality apply forces and torques directly to the pole. Here's the loading and extension arm dimensions for the assembly. You can see the weight of the lighting fixtures applied at the CG of each fixture and the moment arm distance from the center line of the support pole. These forces cause torques on the pole at the extension arm attachment points. This diagram shows the forces from each light fixture directly resolved to torques and forces applied at the extension arm attachment points. We'll apply these loads directly to the simulation beam model. We made a configuration where the light fixtures and extension arms are suppressed. The support pole is developed as two bodies with a connection at the location for the middle extension arm, and you'll see why in a moment. We define a study and observe the simulation tree. Here you can see the two bodies used to make the pole. Instead of meshing the two bodies with solid elements, we'll change them to beams by right-clicking on each body and choosing Treat as Beam. Now we edit the joints and click on the Calculate button. You can see the new joints enumerated in the results list. The purple joint sphere represents a connection between the two bodies that highlight when you right-click on the joint. The olive color on these joints just means there is no connection to any other beam. We have fixed the bottom joint and now we'll apply the forces and torques to the remaining joints on this wireframe view. A force of 15 pounds is applied at the middle joint. So we'll select the joint and an edge of the pole for a direction. I'll make the symbol a little bigger and we'll put in 15 pounds and click OK. I'll rotate around for a different view, and I'll apply a torque to the joint. I select the front plane for reference so I can apply a moment normal to the front plane. You can see the symbol show up and we'll put in 450 inch pounds. I'll enlarge the symbol a little bit. I'll stop here and explain the symbol that looks like a nail. The moment function uses the right hand rule. Use your right hand and point your thumb in the direction of the nail point. Then curl your fingers naturally to represent the nail head. Your fingers automatically curl in the direction of the torque or moment. Remember, however, this direction convention only works with your right hand. We'll click OK and now apply the 15 pound force to the top joint. We'll apply a torque to the top joint using the same reference plane. The value is 270 inch pounds, but we note it needs to torque in the opposite direction. I ran this so now we can look at the results. You can see the effect of the loads on the displacement plot. The torque on this joint is trying to twist the pole to the left. Its value is 450 inch pounds. The torque on this joint is trying to twist the pole to the right. Its effect is not as pronounced since it has a lower value of 270 inch pounds. However, the effect is to help straighten out the pole. In this video, we showed an example of applying a torque to a beam structure in SOLIDWORKS simulation. 